I would first like you, if you can, if you want to, is to, to, to get down and maybe even to, to lie down. <laughs> Close your eyes. And if you can and want to, listen to the sounds of the flutes. Now imagine that the ceiling above you is curved. That screens are all around you. Everywhere there are film projectors. And what all the projectors and the slide projectors, they're clicking and hissing and they're making spinning sounds. If you walk around, you'll trip over wires. You'll trip over other people. The room is getting warmer, warmer with the heat of the projectors, the bodies of the people lying around you. You may start to smell some sweat. And sometimes, perhaps, you smell a waft of marijuana just passing over your head. Just now, when you were closing your eyes, you were in an imaginary dome that was actually physically built uh, by the American filmmaker Stan Vanderbeek in the early 1960s. And he called it the movie drone. For Vanderbeek, as for many other experimental filmmakers at the time, cinema had to become expanded. It had to envelope mankind in a sphere of technology and screens. And it had to permanently expand our consciousness. So it was a little bit like physical bodies and electric media had started to form a kind of extended nervous system. So in this extended nervous system you would be able to wear your brain outside of your skull. But here I want to turn to Harry Smith because there were other ways of intervening into the mind, magical and imaginative ways. To pair up Harry Smith and Stan van der Beek is a kind of odd couple. Even though both envisioned an expanded cinema, as I was talking about, and a cinema that would be everywhere around us, a cinema for an expanded mind, Van der Beek was entirely hooked up with the world of technology scholarships and artist residencies in companies, whereas Smith had always remained a kind of outsider. So I'm very happy that Simon Pummel uh, is here uh, tonight with us. Simon is a filmmaker and artist. So I think that one of the things that for me is a link and that Flora and I have talked about is it's a kind of an interest in this, what, what the languages that tread the line between illumination and madness. And they're of course quite connected to expanded cinema because those languages tend to have hidden in them some hidden belief that somehow everything is connected to everything. Which can be a very useful thought, but it can also be actually a really harmful thought to, to your daily life. Um, so the second part of the Shockhead project was in fact a, um, a series of installations. And those installations were called the Sputnik Effect. And they um, are named after uh, a phenomenon psychiatrist talked about in the 50s, that when the Sputnik went up, people arrived in psychiatric casualty and started saying Sputnik was speaking to them directly. And it felt very right to make that as a piece of expanded cinema, and it felt very right to make it as a piece of expanded cinema that uses 1950s-style 3D glasses. You should all have some of these red-green lens glasses, um, which is, of course, the tool that they used for making you know, sci-fi, paranoid, popular pulp fiction films in the 50s. have been 
immersed in this wonderful uh, artistic uh, um, expanded mind world but what we are going to see now as uh, our last part of this evening is a documentary we stay in the 60s it's a documentary made on the 7th of january 1965 uh, which was the day after bart Hughes. Um, you know, a student of medicine and later one of the initiators of the counterculture Provo in Amsterdam, um, decided to drill a hole in his skull. And he had been thinking of that for some time. Uh, and this was his, you know, way of, you know, having or performing an extended mind. And even if it's geweest, gistermorgen om 5 uur ongeveer, tussen 5 en 6. Um, het lokaal verdoven van de huid, de spieren en het botvlies. Op het voorhoofd, op het hoogste punt dat ik in de spiegel nog kon zien. Na het lokaal verdoven, het openen van de huid, horizontaal. Het splijten van de spier, verticaal. En het inbrengen van de boer. Waarmee ik eerst een gaatje tot op de dura mater, het harde hersenvlies, heb geboord. En... Uh, En dat gaatje heb ik toen uitgeboord tot ongeveer 5 mm doorsnee. Heb je daarna nog uh, marihuana gerookt? Ja, ja, ik heb wat uh, van de beste marihuana gerookt, Congo. Maar daar merkte ik niets van, niets. Dus ik ben in ieder geval higher dan je van marihuana kunt worden. Maar dit is de belangrijkste stap die de mens sinds het rechtop gaan lopen uh, nu kan ondernemen. Hij kan nu de correctie op het rechtop lopen. Aanbrengen en alle bezwaren die er aan het uh, niet high zijn verbonden zijn, die zijn nu ondervangen. <tie> 